Today, in our manual for nonviolent struggle, we're talking about the vision of tomorrow. The journey you're taking is not an easy one. It never is. But every journey, easy or not, starts with the first step. In the case of nonviolent struggle, this step is your answer to the question, what is your ultimate goal? What kind of future do you imagine for yourself and your fellow citizens? What kind of society do you want to live in? Do you know the answer to these questions? If I were king for a day and had Harry Potter's magic wand, what kind of world would I like to make happen? If you know, you have your vision of tomorrow. If not, it's time to think of one. Without this vision, your movement, your journey, you're going nowhere. And it's pretty certain that you will end up lost, exhausted, beaten, and wondering why your efforts to win a non-violent fight against the oppression didn't have any results. Do you remember the legendary quote from Martin Luther King? I have a dream. Well, his dream was his vision of tomorrow. So let us help you in developing your own vision of tomorrow. Start thinking about specific things Human rights, education, general welfare, corruption versus transparency and rule of law, religion, economics. What would you like your society to be like in these areas? What should your government do about it? And what can you do about it? What do you think is very important? But it's not only that, it's also about what your people think. Why? Because your vision should never be only yours. It needs to be a shared vision. Don't forget that you need people to join your movement and change the society. The more people share a vision, the more forceful it becomes. The more forceful, the more chances to make that vision a reality. You need popular support. To get it, the people need to see a place for themselves within your vision. People will join you only if there is something for them in your vision. Every society consists of different groups religious groups, ethnic minority groups, labor unions, professionals, teachers and students, civil servants, farmers, women, academics, politicians, police and military. Most people will struggle and sacrifice only for goals that they care about. And you must learn how to listen to the people and respond to their needs in creating your vision. Don't you dare go to the people and tell them what you think they need, as they will never follow you that way. You have to try and see the world and the society you live in through their eyes. What is important to them? What will make their lives better and what will make their children's lives better? If you really want to find answers to these questions, you have to listen to the people and pay close attention to what the people actually care about. By doing this, you will develop empathy and an understanding of the actual needs and problems of your fellow citizens, and you will be able to include their needs in your vision, giving them a reason to join your movement and journey towards a better society. After all, you're fighting for a better society and a better life. If you can answer their most immediate needs, people will feel that you care and that you really want to change things for the better. Once you have this vision of tomorrow, you have a permanent guideline for your non-violent movement and your supporters. You have a happy marriage between the people and their ideas. And now you know where you're heading, to the world reflected in your vision. And at every point of your struggle, you will have your vision as a guiding light and a reminder why you are taking this journey. But don't get too excited. There are still many more obstacles you'll have to face allies you will have to find, and of course, opponents you will have to defeat. Don't forget that vision and strategy are two very different things. Vision relates to where you want to be, and strategy is more of, how am I going to get there? So, stay tuned for the next episode of our Manual for Nonviolent Struggle.